Ever heard the old saying, follow your heart? It's been dished out like life's ultimate advice. But, here's the twist, the heart can play you like a fiddle sometimes. You might think you know it like the back of your hand, but truth is, it's as unpredictable as the weather. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 from the Bible gives a reality check about our hearts. It talks about how deceitful and wicked they can be. Imagine that. The very thing we're often told to trust might not be all rainbows and sunshine. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. Think about it, you might swear up and down that you've got your heart figured out. But let's be real, life throws curveballs that can turn you inside out. Your breaking point? Hard to pinpoint until it smacks you in the face. Look around, people end up in places they never thought they'd be, doing things they swore they never would. Some folks are behind bars because their hearts led them astray. It's a harsh reality check. And hey, let's not forget the good old excuse, I don't know what got into me. How many times have we heard that? It's like our hearts have a mind of their own, steering us into murky waters without a map. The human heart, my friends, is a mystery box. You can't always trust it to lead you down the right path. Ever seen someone make life-altering decisions based solely on feelings? It's like trying to navigate a maze blindfolded. I've seen it firsthand, people in the middle of a mess because they went with their heart instead of their head. Take this couple on the brink of divorce. The wife strayed because she followed her heart straight into an affair. If only she'd let her mind, fueled by wisdom, take the reins. Picture this, people walking down the aisle, but their pals are ringing alarm bells louder than a fire drill. Yet, they're too caught up in following their heart's whims to see the red flags flapping in their faces. The human heart's deceptions go beyond personal matters. It's wild how some twist scriptures just to fit their own desires. Men have tried to bend the Bible's words to justify having multiple partners. That's the heart's twisted game, folks. Bottom line? Trusting your heart alone is like sailing a ship without a compass. Sure, it's essential, but you need a whole lot more to navigate life's stormy seas. Think twice before giving it the driver's seat, sometimes, it's better off as a co-pilot. You won't believe what I saw once. There was this guy, twisting the Bible to suit his own desires. He claimed the scripture backed up his desire for multiple wives. Can you imagine that? Using holy texts to justify personal whims? Our hearts can be real tricksters. They can lead folks to bend the truth, even using the Bible to cover their tracks. It's like a license to sin, all dressed up in holy garb. Let's get this straight about the Bible, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it's also a history book. Not everything in it gets a thumbs up from God. Some parts serve as a reality check, showing us the context of human decisions. Take this divorce court drama I witnessed. A woman wanted out because she felt unhappy. No cheating, no mistreatment, just the spark fizzled out. It's a sad truth, a lot of folks are calling it quits over lost butterflies. But marriage isn't all about fireworks. 
It's about loyalty, through thick and thin. It's a vow you make, not just for sunny days, but for the storms too. Social media doesn't help either, it's a highlight reel, not the real deal. Comparing your marriage to others based on that? Recipe for disaster. Then there's this misconception that everyone's inherently good. Truth is, our hearts can take us places we never imagined. How many times have we heard people say, I don't know what got into me? That's the heart's unpredictability for you. Here's the kicker, you need a heart upgrade. And guess who's the only one with that skill? Yep, God. A born-again heart? That's the game changer. It's about transforming from the inside out, seeking what pleases the higher power. You're not just dealing with a lack of effort, it's deeper than that. A new heart from the big man upstairs changes the game. Suddenly, sin doesn't sit well, and your compass points to the divine. Getting a new heart? It's not rocket science. Start by being born again, then dive into the word. That's the playbook for a mind overhaul. Look around, it's a wild world out there. Self-control's playing hide-and-seek while sin's having a field day. Scriptures warned us about this, a world losing its moral grip. It's like a city with crumbling walls, defenseless against the onslaught of vice. Remember Proverbs? It's like a city without self-control, it's vulnerable. Without that inner fortress, we're sitting ducks for all sorts of trouble. So, the moral? Don't let your heart steer the ship alone. A God-given heart makeover? That's the compass you need in these stormy waters. Look around, and you'll see it, a world where people are stumbling into sinful pits, their defenses down. Picture this, individuals diving into affairs, unable to resist their cravings, falling into the dark pit of sin. They know the damage they're causing but can't hit the brakes. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, ever heard of it? It talks about the fruits of the Spirit, and guess what's on the menu? Self-control. But when folks lack this, they're bankrupt in the moral department. Ever peeked into 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 4? It's like a prophecy of our times, a world obsessed with itself, proud, disobedient, loveless, and, here's the kicker, lacking self-control. Let's break it down. From compulsive spending to addiction and even adultery, it all links back to one thing, no self-control. Stealing, cheating, and all the rest, they're just branches on the same tree. Here's the deal, self-control isn't just a fancy word, it's the glue that keeps the world from spinning off its axis. But what do we see? A culture pushing us to live like there's no tomorrow, following our every whim, no matter who gets hurt along the way. Contrast that with the Bible's stance, a call for self-restraint in a world screaming for instant gratification. It's like God saying, hold your horses, while the world's chanting, go wild. I once heard a preacher say, God's all about self-control, while the world's busy handing out birth control. Makes you think, right? Our world promotes freedom without boundaries, especially in the bedroom. But the Bible? It sings a different tune. Funny thing is, many folks know right from wrong but still veer off the path. Take casual hookups, deep down, they know it's a mess, but they dive in anyway. Why? Lack of self-control. The devil? 
Oh, he's all in on this. He knows that once he swipes away self-control, the doors to sin swing wide open. It's all written in 2 Timothy 3, dangerous times ahead. Guess what? We're living in them. But hold up, self-control isn't just about saying a no to the wrong things. It's about letting the Holy Spirit steer your ship. It's the Spirit's way of saying, hey, I got your back. Without self-control, you might end up doing things you regret, like watching junk online or saying yes to actions that mess up your life. It's like being a leaf in the wind, no say in where you land. And trust me, that's where many folks find themselves today. They wish they could say a no to harmful actions, but they're caught in a whirlwind, making choices they don't want to. Self-control? It's the anchor we're losing, leaving us adrift in a sea of bad choices. Picture this, folks caught in a loop of bad choices, not because they want to, but because they're missing a crucial piece, self-control. They wish they could put the brakes on their temper or spending habits, but they're like a car without brakes going downhill fast. Self-control? It's not just saying a no to the bad stuff, it's about steering our lives in the right direction. It's about making choices that actually better our lives instead of just going with the flow. And hey, this isn't just about sin, it's about everyday stuff too. Like folks diving into mortgages or cars they can't afford because they can't rein in their impulses. Ever been in a relationship with someone who can't handle their cash? It's like juggling grenades. I'm convinced lack of self-control might be the silent killer of relationships. It's not just about messing up morally or financially, it seeps into our daily routines. You might find yourself overdosing on social media or munching away mindlessly. Talk about a shift in behavior. People spend hours on social media, snooping into others' lives, instead of focusing on their own. Imagine the change if all that time went into something productive. On average, folks spend around two and a half hours daily on socials. Can you believe that? That's six years of scrolling over a lifetime. And guess what? It's turning some into screen zombies, glued to their phones, losing touch with reality, all because they lack self-control. Here's the thing, self-control isn't just a relationship savior, it's a lifesaver. In marriages, it's the glue that keeps things from falling apart. When it's missing, chaos reigns, and divorce papers start getting signed. But hold up, this isn't just about relationships. It's about battling personal demons too. Gambling addiction? Binge-watching things you know ain't right? Self-control's missing in action. And let's not forget those struggling with cheating, lying, or even stealing. They're like warriors fighting a losing battle. But here's the deal, you don't have to give in. Fight back. Turn to the Holy Spirit for backup. Don't let these bad actions cozy up in your life, they're your foes, not your pals. It's tough, yeah, but don't throw in the towel on yourself. Believe you can beat these struggles with a little divine help. Change is possible, and you've got the power to do it. Here's the ugly truth, not everyone wants to do wrong, but sin's got a grip on them. It's like a dark cloud hanging over, making folks do things they wish they didn't. The devil's playing hardball, pushing folks to lose control. But there's hope. Prayer's a game changer. Just like Hannah, 
who prayed for a child and got blessed, prayer can move mountains. Seek the Holy Spirit through prayer, that divine connection can help you fight back against life's battles. The world's not a pretty place, but you don't have to be a puppet to sin strings. Ask, believe, and trust in the Holy Spirit's power. It's your ticket to self-control in a world that's lost its grip. You know, one of the best gifts from God? Self-control. It's like an invisible shield that stops us from making dumb choices that could mess up our lives. In these crazy times, God's looking for folks who can stand firm, saying no to all sorts of bad stuff, no matter how tempting. Let's talk about what's happening around us. People are changing, but not for the better. They're leaning toward things that don't really matter. As believers, it's vital we spot the signs of the times and what it means for our faith. Check this out, in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 9, Paul talks about the last days, describing folks who've lost touch with God. You know what's crazy? He says they'll be super into themselves, like, obsessed with money and pleasure, forgetting about God. But here's the thing, our first love should always be God. Jesus was crystal clear about that. In Matthew 24 verse 12, Jesus warns about hearts turning cold. It's like people stop caring, become all me, 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 and forget about love, kindness, and empathy for others. This self-centered vibe? It's a big sign of the times. We get caught up in the daily grind, chasing after things that don't last. Money, status, goals, they're okay, but are they really worth it? In the end, will they mean anything when we face God's judgment? Think about it. Instead of obsessing over things that won't stick around, we need to focus on stuff that matters, our bond with God, learning from His Word, and chilling with other believers. Loving God and loving others like he taught us is the real deal. Let's talk distractions. They come in two flavors, good and bad. And boy, our world's full of them, trying to pull us away from the real deal, Jesus. What's diverting your attention? Some shiny thing or a mess up? Mobiles and social media? Great for staying connected, but let's be real, they can suck up a ton of our time. Most folks check their phones before bed and right after waking up. Sound familiar? Could these gadgets be keeping us from focusing on Jesus? This world's like a circus with distractions at every turn, trying to grab our love and attention from Jesus. Imagine if we spent just half the time we do on socials praying or reading God's word. How different would life be? Latest stats say folks are clocking in around two and a half hours a day on social media. That's a whole lot of screen time, and it's on the rise. Think about it, how much of that time could we swap for a closer relationship with Jesus? That's what it's all about, right? Keeping our hearts and eyes locked on Jesus. It's not easy with all these distractions around, but hey, that's the Christian journey. Start with Jesus, end with Jesus and navigate the distractions in between to keep that fire burning for him. Hey, you know, we're all caught up in life, right? TV shows, streaming platforms, you name it, distractions are everywhere. I'm not saying stop watching your fave shows or ditch socials altogether. But, seriously, have you lost that fire for Jesus? Let's get real here. This might sting a bit, but it's for your own good. 
saying we love God but giving him a rushed 25 second prayer in the morning while binging TV for hours? That's not adding up. The world's designed to keep us super busy, mega distracted. Is that happening to you? Have you got no time for God? Are you all about now, 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 without a thought for the future? Has the devil got your head spinning with earthly stuff, forgetting about what really matters? As Christians, we can't let the world mold us. It's all about today, this life, Romans 12 verse 2 says it plain. The devil's a sneaky one, hiding the truth that we'll face God's judgment. He keeps us too busy to care. This world doesn't want us ready for the biggest appointment ever, meeting God. Look, we can prep for everything, money, retirement, kids' future, but are we ready to meet God? Don't you want to be prepared for that day? That's the real deal, not some feel-good stuff. I'm not here with the fluffy stuff, boosting egos or telling you how to make a quick buck. None of that matters when it's you and God face to face, right? All these worldly things won't matter then. What's the point of having it all here if you end up in hell? Being a big shot here but roasting for eternity? That's a scary thought. Sure, there's tons online about self-help and success, but today? It's about your soul. This life's a tiny blip compared to eternity, where you'll end up, heaven or hell. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says it, Seek God while you can, call out while he's near. That's something to think about, right now. You see, this ain't about today, it's about forever. It's about where you'll spend eternity, and that's worth giving some serious thought, don't you think? Let's talk priorities. Ever felt like life's distractions are stealing your God time? Hope not. It's easy to get too caught up in the here and now and forget the big picture, right? We don't want that. The Bible warned us, end times, people picking pleasure over God. Pleasure? Yeah, it's a sneaky distraction. Think about it, pleasure in all the wrong stuff, sex stuff, stirring up trouble, revenge, drugs, booze, you name it. But, here's the thing, pleasure's a mirage. It looks good, feels good, but it's a dead end. Timothy nailed it, living for pleasure? Dead inside, even while breathing. Pleasure's a distraction that never lasts. Sometimes, just when you're getting serious about God, bam. Someone special walks in, stirring up those desires. It's like the religion of pleasure, putting physical wants above God's plans. The Bible's clear, the spirit and flesh don't speak the same language. When we put our fleshly desires first, we're choosing pleasure over God. Paul nailed it in Timothy. Pleasure addicts? Dead while living. He meant going all out for excessive luxury and self-indulgence. Pleasure's a trap that kills your soul. Look, in these crazy days, more folks will get sidetracked by sinful pleasures. But us believers? We've got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, blocking out those distractions. Money, sports, looks, they're all small stuff. Focus on what really matters, put God at the top of your list. That's the deal. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.